Hey, Roxanne, how you doing today? Hey, Adam, just fine. How are you? All right, all right. Good to see you. Good to see you. We're uh, we're definitely having a good time getting things set up here, but I appreciate <laughs> you coming out today and, and hanging out a little bit early in the morning and uh, checking some stuff out and continuing our conversation in general. I've just it's just been, a little early. You it's know? Just, a, just a little early. Here hey, we go. You know, it's all about the coffee as right. long as we've got, you know, our yeah. coffee life is yeah. great. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Coffee cheers to you. Uh, cheers. This, this, this beautiful Friday morning. So, no, in general, I just was, uh, you know, continuing the conversation with people since COVID-19 has happened and um, a lot of great things happening in, in the 3D printing and, and additive manufacturing industry online now. And of course, uh, getting to speak with you is great because uh, the company that you work for, Link3D, has been a huge part of what's going on. And, and Link3D in general is a software out there that's controlling everything that's going on uh, in the industry with, the, with the, all the machines communicating with each other and kind of right. going, going through the MES structure uh, to set up what's going on. But now helping the community just in general set up these uh, online conferences as much as possible. And, and uh, I wanted to just uh, say thank you for that because it's been really great to be a part of that and see what's going on and be able to attend these meetings in lieu of missing our trade show season right now, which is it's, usually- yeah, It's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. So uh, in general, how have you been dealing with COVID-19 over there? Is, uh, this last month and a half, I know what's been going on with Link3, but what's been happening in your personal life? Have you been uh, working from home, uh, traveling during this time? What's been happening? Yeah, primarily working from home. Uh, was uh, in Texas for a little while and then uh, of course, been back here sort of under lockdown uh, with my daughter, my granddaughter. And uh, so that's been kind of fun. You know, it's, it's weird and different because you don't have all the travel. And for people like you and I that, you know, we sort of live our lives on an airplane and live our lives in front of our customers and, uh, you know, at their sites, it definitely has been something that uh, has been different. My granddaughter is like, you know, are you going to get on a plane, Nana, anytime soon? And it's like, nope, Nana gets to stay home. So, uh, yeah, I bet you she's, nice. she's loving that. Oh, yeah. 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 She's loving that. Yeah, I've noticed uh, my daughter and also the the dog is like, wow, man, when when are you going to leave? You've been here uh -huh. too much. You know what I'm saying? He keeps looking at me like you're you're still here. I'm like, yeah, yeah man, I'm still here. Sorry to take up space uh, in your house, buddy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's the dog's a little sick of the family at this point. Well, I yeah, think. I mean, you're interrupting his nap time, you know. Yeah, you know, he's he's like, hey, you know, what what's what's going on here? You, you gotta leave. It's it's been, exactly. It's been you know? nice, but I need my space. Please move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. no. But he's a uh, he's a, a little dachshund, so he's got a little uh, you know he's got a little attitude of his own. But he's he's been uh, holding tight through this COVID nineteen time. But, yeah, but they're just like everybody else. They don't understand social distancing. You know. No, no, I, they don't. They don't get it. But uh, I think he's 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 uh, dreaming about it right now. Just us staying away from him for just a little bit, so he can get some peace. And, and oh, uh, I know. Uh, why? But yeah, so that's 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 nice uh, for the dog, I guess. But um, you know, in in general, it's been a big adjustment for all of us. And um, you know, there are some good things that have come out of it. And obviously, in our industry, it's it's what's been happening with uh, the response from three D printing and additive manufacturing, with personal right. protection equipment, and just uh, the local community stuff that's been happening, where people have been able to rely on the printers that are located inside of each individual uh, location to kind of represent and to fill that gap with what's needed inside of some of our healthcare system. So that's been great. Yeah, agreed. The, the online events have been great. Link 3D has been put on, put on a, a couple of great ones. And I know there's another one that you're sponsoring coming up here this Monday. But just to get back what Link 3D does in general, can you explain to us what the MES is and, and uh, what Link 3D brings to the community with your software? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I like to, coming from a, a production uh, facility in additive, I like to look at our software as being the operating system, if you will, for your manufacture, for your additive manufacturing floor. Um, it really is tailored around additive. Uh, everything from the order entry and quoting all the way through shipment and delivery. Um, it uh, will, we're actually getting ready. I know one of the things we'll talk about is sort of the future of Link 3D. Um, we're also going to be rolling out our, our new quality management system, specifically for manufacturing. 
which is going to be really important for uh, those customers that are in those regulated markets, primarily your, your aerospace and defense markets, your medical markets, things like that, that really rely on uh, a very solid quality management system to facilitate their um, qualification programs and production programs uh, once you are, are working with qualified parts. And uh, so, you know, again, we like to think, ourselves, uh, think of ourselves as sort of that operating system that enables your additive manufacturing floor. Yeah, that's true. So it's a manufacturing execution system. That's what MES stands for. Right. And, uh, and you were talking about uh, expanding into the QMS, which is the quality system, correct? Right. Yeah, the yeah. quality management system. Yeah. And, and so what, what are the differences between the two? Can you get into what's the, you know, what uh, one does uh, different than the other? Sure, sure. So from a, a manufacturing execution system, you're, you're really focusing on um, uh, your production planning, your production scheduling, managing your, uh, managing your production process holistically. Mm -hmm. So everything from the raw material input, making sure that you are managing that in whichever fashion your facility uh, desires that to happen. Um, you know, you're able to quote it, you're able to accept the order, you're uh, able to plan it and schedule it, you're able to monitor it uh, through the print process, as well as all of the downstream processes that typically happen in an additive manufacturing uh, uh, operation. And then, you know, taking it through, uh, taking it through the shipping stage, of course, and then underneath that, uh, and really basically from beginning to end, is uh, the quality management system. So from every stage uh, of your manufacturing process, you're able to assess the quality of those stages, uh, being able to capture, um, is an example, if you're connected to a printer, so maybe it's an EOS printer or, or one of the other printers that we support, we're able to get that data into our system. Uh, again, capturing it for, from a quality perspective, but then also starting to look at capturing uh, the data and enabling root cause and corrective action for engineers. Um, you know, when you have a hiccup uh, on a machine, we all know that that happens. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I know you know that quite well as uh, also, but when you have those hiccups, you know, you're able to look in, at the data and uh, really start um, making sense of the data, if you will. If you've got a great part that prints um, and you think it's great, but then it fails in mechanical testing for some reason, then you're, you've got that data within link three that enables an engineer to go through a root cause corrective action uh, type of activity so that uh, obviously at the, at the end of the day, the goal is to make sure that you deliver those high quality parts with every single build. And right. so our quality management system being sort of the underlying foundational layer, if you will, will help enable that, will help ensure that um, if you've got a qualified part for a particular customer, um, maybe it's one of the major OEMs, that that part, you know, that process is repeatable, mm. um, that your teams have been trained properly, that they've been certified on those particular uh, operations that they, that they have to do, that your, uh, your inspector's qualifications are also logged so that you, know, you can apply a, a certification stamp to particular operations, or maybe the whole data book. And at the end of the day, you're able to get that data book for that part, have that data book be digital instead of a bunch of uh, papers, you know, on people's desks, right. or in particular file cabinets, um, or maybe that have been scanned in uh, in or out on some server someplace, but really being able to aggregate that into one area yeah. um, is really important. And then being able to recall that very quickly should an OEM or, or somebody need access to that data at the end of the day. Um, <clears throat> and then on top of that, you look at uh, facilitating things like your FMEAs, your uh, failure yes. mode effects analysis, or your PFMEAs. You're looking at uh, corrective and preventative actions. Everything around continuous improvement is really yeah. what the foundation of our quality management system is going to be. Yeah, and it works towards that that closed loop where you're actually, you know, looking at, hey, now that we know this from the data, how can we take certain corrective actions on the right. spot eventually? But working towards that, that's a that's a big uh, solution for people that that they that is going to be really part of the digital chain and what's happening right now. Uh, right, and it's capturing that digital thread, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And you know, then so you've got the digital thread. 
then, you know, holistically in, you know, sort of the future of, of uh, some of the things we're looking at is doing a lot of that predictive analytics, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to predict when, it, when something's going to fail, be able to predict when you're going to need maintenance, things like that. Um, that's really going to be sort of the foundation and heart of, of where we're headed from a quality management perspective. Yeah, a production planning system. That's 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 really awesome. And 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 we've gotten to see a lot of that. I worked with uh, you guys over there at EOS on the, the benchmarking side. Something so simple, but setting up that process is a huge part of what happens in understanding. You know what where the part came from, what was done to it, all the iterations that it's gone through to finally come out the other end and be a successful part. Uh, being able to capture and hold that data, and then also to share it with a customer is a big part of their success because to know and understand that that background knowledge instead of just saying here's your part uh, it's a huge you know it's a huge it's a huge process in understanding what's going on and, and uh, that that takes it in a, and puts it in a little snapshot for you and makes it real easy so uh, right and then you know if you look at it from a manufacturing execution perspective when you do things like what we're doing with EOS we're connecting all of the benchmarking facilities globally Mm -hmm. so, yeah. You know, you've got, you know, there's a lot of discussion, you know, obviously it, uh, with the COVID-19 being able to do distributed manufacturing. Right. And so that's really, you know, from a from a customer perspective, we're enabling that, you know, you've got your digital part inventory within our software. Um, you're able to pick a facility, you know, that you need that's got capacity for that day. Um, or maybe you've had a. Um, a machine that has gone down uh, that you weren't expecting. So you're able to look into our, our system to all of those facilities that are connected, look for capacity and reroute a printed, you know, a part that needs to be printed to a particular facility that's got, that's got both capacity and, you know, in the areas where you need that facility or that machine to be certified, you're able to, you know, ensure that those um, capabilities are set so that you're only printing in the areas that, that you really can print in. But it really it does enable distributed manufacturing. And, and as, as far as materials go too, I mean, it, I've, I've seen a lot of things where you can get into all the different material properties and be able to you know, kind of control that digitally. Is that something where you, know, you guys are pushing further into that area? I saw just a little bit of that, but I, I, I didn't know how far that uh, Link 3D is actually getting into that side of it with materials. Yeah, so um, we are getting into the materials management side as well. Um, as you know, managing materials, not just um, from, the, from the virgin material perspective, okay, if we, if we just talk about powder, you know, you've got the virgin material, but then you've got the reuse material, and you've got to be able to manage um, the mixtures. Maybe you're, you're reformulating. Um, mm. Maybe you're reworking the powder. You know, you've sent it out to, to have it, uh, reprocess so that you can bring it back in. You know, being able to manage all of that is is very critical to ensure the success of the part. And a lot of times you've got OEMs that require uh, a maximum amount of reuses for a particular uh, qualified part. So then, what do you do with that other material? You know, it may be you can only use it ten times, let's say, uh, for a particular OEM's part, but you've got maybe twenty or thirty more reuses of this material. You know, being able to understand the morphology of that, being able to understand the chemistry of that, whatever those um, properties are, being able to keep that so that uh, if you get a customer's request, you can look back in your inventory and you can go, okay, this, this lot of material cannot be used for X, but hey, look at all this material I've got for Y. And being able to manage that and enable that is, is pretty important. Yeah, that's awesome. Looking forward to seeing more of that. I know that's a, a big part of material management that is uh, uh, an un unexplored territory as far as uh, roping it in and getting it to do what you need to. But uh, I know Link3D is really pushing that envelope. So looking forward to seeing how that progresses. Yeah, we're really, excited about it. That's awesome. Now, um, as far as talk, let's talk a bit about what you have been doing with online events because, uh, you know, uh, I would say damn 2020 what a great name d-a-m-m -M 2020 but uh, that that conference was it was awesome and then the one before it that kind of took over when AMUG fell out of the loop to go to that event um, you know it's just been great so uh, I just want to say thank you uh, for, for getting that done so quickly and it, it speaks to the uh, the company being that nimble to go ahead and kind of change their focus and direction from what was going on immediately 
you know, to what's really immediate and emergency. And, and, and uh, yeah. wow, just the timing behind that to organize it on the spot because it wasn't something that was planned for months. <laughs> it was just something that was done on the spot. So yeah, congratulations for being that nimble. And I'm sure no one got a lot of sleep during that time. Uh, but what, I mean, it was like a 26 hour event at one time. So yeah, that, that was really impressive just to go ahead and, and also kick it out globally and, you know, get to share it with Asia Pacific and, and, and things like that. That right. was a, that was really neat to see that all taking place. And I don't know if that's ever been done like that before even. Yeah, so, no, it hasn't. And, yeah. and what a lot of people may not realize is, is our very first conference, the DAMC, the Digital Added Manufacturing Conference, we pulled that off in six days. Wow, so, that's what so I that, thought. Yeah. You know, we, we knew or we felt like uh, the conferences, AMUG and stuff, were going to get canceled. And uh, we were all on a phone call going, okay, you know, this is not good. It's, you know, the... Um, you know, the, the connectivity, being able to bring the industry together, you know, is starting to unravel. And, um, you know, what can we do? I mean, we're, we're a fantastic company at being able to create and connect the digital thread. Um, you know, can we pull together and connect the human thread? And that's really what it became is, you know, how can we, it wasn't about Link3D. Um, it was about the industry and, you know, we saw a huge challenge in, you know, it was all over LinkedIn and, and a lot of the other social media uh, channels about how disappointed people were about missing the conference and being able to connect. Um, you know, humans, we like to connect. We like to talk. You know, some people are more introverted than extroverted. Um, but still, you know, that connection is important and especially in our industry where everything continues to grow and mature. And quite frankly, change, you know, every time you yeah. turn around, there's a new hardware manufacturer popping up or new material, you know, being developed and being able to stay on top of that in a very quick fashion um, was something that we, you know, obviously have lost uh, due to COVID-19. And so um, we all just jumped in and said, let's pull it off. And, um, you know, Janet is, is absolutely beyond amazing. And she happened to have a uh, a colleague uh, from former lives that was developing this Remo platform and she reached out and bam, you know, we were on Remo. So in, in about six days, we pulled that off. And I mean, Adam, we had 1200 plus participants in our first, wow. conference, you know, in six days. It yeah, was crazy. That was all, that was just inspiring. Really. I, I couldn't believe when I went into the actual event and saw what was going on. I was like, this yeah. happened so quick. Yeah, and, and, um, and I mean, people were just like, okay, how come I didn't get invited to speak? What the heck, you know? It, it, it was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, wait. I we, can't believe I forgot you, but. <laughs> yeah, just, we didn't forget, but I mean, in, in eight hours, you can only fill it up so much. Plus, sure. you know, we really wanted to have that networking time, right? Because yeah. that's really what the conferences are about. They're about learning, but they're really about networking and connecting and, um, you know, driving that relationship, if you will. Um, and so we, you know, even though we had 1200 plus delegates, um, it still just wasn't enough time. And, um, then with the, the clamoring from speakers and participants for another one, uh, you know, we're sitting back and, and just sort of brainstorming ideas and, uh, the 24 hour, uh, uh, thought came up and, uh, we've got several members of our team that are runners and have done marathons. And I think Janet's the one that actually said, hey, what about a marathon? And we all looked at her and went, uh, we think you're crazy. Now we know you're crazy. <laughs> hey, this is actually not a bad idea. You know, put it on in the format of a marathon, 26.2 hours, um, or really it's 26.2 miles. You move that to hours. And so uh, it, we just, it, it literally just took off. And I mean, we still had companies going, wait, what about me? Why can't I participate? You know? Sure. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, when we did all the, the tallying and whatnot, um, you know, when we looked 3,400 plus delegates, Adam, it was crazy. 40 participants. I think we had our 40 presentations. I think we had a total of 75 people in those presentations with panels and whatnot. Um, you know, the thought leadership that came across, you know, yeah. throughout the whole conference. It wasn't like there were, you know, sort of ebbs and flow speakers. I mean, we had 
some of the best spe speakers that we could have had in the industry. And I mean, it was fantastic. Yeah, very inspirational. Uh, I think everyone was really stepping up their game just uh, because of the time and also the passion behind what we're doing. I, I think, you know, everyone I talk to in the industry really loves the industry. So in, yeah. this, t in this time to kind of have everything, you know, taken from us as far as our trade show uh, season and then to be able to plug into what was happening with the live events, you know, everyone just started to really lay out their their uh, their emotions in that that sense, yeah. and it, it it became a really nice event. There were a lot of nice, uh, you know, you got to see applications. I know even uh, Carbon got on there with it. Was it HP also that was talking about? Who was talking about with the kid and the prosthetic? Yeah, that's uh, the Patterson family. And yeah, um, that was a very inspiring story. Obviously. Yeah, Carbon and Dinsmore. I mean, I'm sitting there going, Dinsmore. okay, don't cry, don't yeah. cry. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, yeah, and that family obviously, you know, was, is very involved and, and uh, very open to sharing their stories. So that was that was a nice thing for them to do. But yeah, uh, it's it's little things like that 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 kind of go. This is why we're doing this. You know, it's exactly. not. Yeah, it's not all this. You know, blah blah blah. It's it's actually what's going on and what happens and how we affect you know other people's lives out there in a positive way. So that was. A great example, and then the bigger example just being you know the live trade shows in general, and and it's exciting to see that continue. So, does Link Three have more plans for that? What's what's well, going on yeah, there? Yeah, <laughs> I mean the the other conference that um, some may some may realize and some may not is right before, believe it or not, that Thursday night before Dam, we mm -hmm. actually hosted Jam, which mm -hmm. was the Japanese no, version. Yes, that's of, right. AMC and um, you know again I guess you know if from a North America perspective you know very thankful that we have a colleague over there that manages our APAC region and he saw the need as well because a lot of his uh, a lot of the APAC uh, industry that that he was working with was like wait a minute you know there y'all are doing this over here we need this in our region yeah and it turned out that you know there is a lack of knowledge sharing um, in that region, more so than I ever would have thought, you know. And uh, so we pulled that one off in about, I think we spent a couple weeks on that, two or three weeks on that. And I mean, in that one, we had 700 plus delegates, wow. you know, through that, you know, 10 hour event, an eight or 10 hour event, I don't remember now. Um, but we had eight presentations, we had virtual networking, et cetera. And so if you look forward, you know, to, to sort of answer your question on where we're going, um, that JAM conference is now going to turn into something monthly. Wow. Um, I mean, that's there was, awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There was, it, it was, uh, there was so much industry passion around it. Um, the knowledge sharing that was going on that they're not necessarily used to that we found out, um, you know, the, the industry leaders that, would like to have more of an influence over there are getting an opportunity uh, through our stage to be able to do that. And so um, not real sure that every month is going to be the same thing, but uh, we're looking at probably four to six hours worth of content slash virtual networking um, to really continue to, you know, allow sort of North America and Europe to present to APAC region more of the things that um, they're doing and really help educate and mentor and guide, uh, you know, businesses over there that may not necessarily be as um, advanced as some of our, our businesses in Europe and, and North America. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, thank heavens for Google Translate. Uh, yes. Because we're spending a lot of time translating stuff, uh, sure. which is fun. But in one of these days, you know, maybe I'll learn a little bit of uh, Japanese at the same time. But uh, yeah, the, the it, benefits, right? That's cool. Yeah. So we've got that coming up. Um, and then, you know, we've got uh, on Monday, the 11th, we're going to be co-sponsoring um, the uh, virtual game day yeah. That's the panel uh, for America Makes COVID-19 Response. And so we're really honored to be able to uh, sponsor the virtual networking and also sponsor the, the actual conference stage with America Makes. And uh, so that's something to be looking forward to if you haven't signed up or, you know, whatever, go take a look at that. But uh, yeah, then we're that's... also looking at um, other ways that we can continue to connect the digital thread. Cause that's, that's one of the biggest things that 
uh, that we heard is, you know, Link 3D is fantastic in, in industry known for connecting the digital thread. And it y'all have just, you know, we've been told that we've done a fantastic job of connecting that human thread. And we really want to continue that um, even after COVID-19. But I, I think we're sort of all in this for a while longer. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, well, that yeah, that's coming up uh, this this Monday, uh, and I believe what, what times it start? Does it have a, a time on that? I think it starts first thing in the morning. Yeah, it starts first thing in the morning, and it's it's going to go uh, pretty much all day. I know there's a lot of posts about it on LinkedIn, um, but uh, yeah, yeah but Eastern time it's uh, yeah, eleven thirty a.m. Eastern time. So yeah, it's ten thirty on the Central time zone, and then it goes. It looks like until four p.m. Eastern time. So it's a really nice event uh, most of the afternoon there. Looking forward to doing that on Monday for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen with the rest of the conferences? You know, we've got IMTS. They're still mm -hmm. saying that that's going on. Quite frankly, I, I hope and pray that it does. Yeah. yeah I, I was mean, having a conversation about that earlier this week. It's come up a lot. It, it, it'd really be uh, refreshing to be there, but there seems to be some question if that's going to happen with the with everything right. going on in Chicago right now and the way they're laying out their plans, it remains to be seen if that's going to happen. We'd like to see it happen, but, uh, you know, maybe a link 3d could do something if that doesn't happen, but that's, yeah. uh, that's a big show and, and it would be unfortunate. Uh, but I know we all need to get to this together. So I'm grateful for the online events that are happening and for what link 3d has done. Um, how in general though, you know, as far as your everyday work goes, I, I believe when you're working from home, uh, link 3d being in New York, you guys are very, uh, I guess, uh, tech savvy on everything that's going on communicating online. Uh, yeah. is, is anyone, um, uh, having any difficulty above and beyond right now is, is it, is it been, has it been a lot, you know, more difficult to get things done or how is the, the team, I, I think I know the answer is you could see it really happening in the last uh, month or so. Everyone's really getting things done, but I just wanted to get a, a view of what Link 3D looks like now that this, this has been happening. Are you guys in meetings every day? Um, I, you know, again, I think I'm answering my, I could answer these questions myself. I just, yeah, but, but uh, give us an idea of what that looks like uh, going through this right now. It looks a lot like this, Adam. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I think I, I saw someplace on um, LinkedIn about Zoom fatigue. I think mm. there's a new terminology called Zoom fatigue. Makes sense. And, um, you know, I mean, you do. You spend your you spend your life online. I think one of the things that um, I've enjoyed most of, most about it is um, this has brought, I believe, a dose of human element to um, not just additive in, in our industry, but but w the world, right? In general. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you've got, I've had so many at the very beginning, really specifically, and, and not so much now, because people are more used to it and more accepting of it. But I can't tell you the number of conference calls I was on where everybody was apologizing for a kid that would probably come in, maybe their son or daughter would come in, or a baby that they used to have care for and now the baby is crying in the background and so they have to go get their child and put them on their lap yes. and have a conference call with your kid you know right there and instead of you know, it, it's nice that over the course of the last couple months the apologies are stopping you know it's it's okay people are feeling that it's okay i mean i've got animals running in and out my at the very beginning my granddaughter i'll never forget it i'm on a conference call and my granddaughter comes in naked and I'm just like, no. Um, and, and so you're know, able to push the camera away really quickly. But um, right. it's, it, it, for me, um, it's bringing a dose of human to our everyday lives that we tend to forget about. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't slowed down. Um, so we're getting a lot of that Zoom fatigue. I, I, I look at my calendar and, and from 6.30 in the morning, uh, Mountain Standard Time, because I'm actually in Colorado, uh, to late in the night. I mean, and, and I think that's the one challenge that, that I'm having, and I've heard a lot of people have, is being able to figure out how to turn it off, right? Because you are working from home, and if you're not used to working from home, um, being able to figure out how to draw that line, you know, mm -hmm. and, and put that sort of swim lane around you that, you know, from this time to this time I'm working, but then I still have a family, you know, 
that that balance. So uh, very much a balance, but it's been fun for us because as you've seen, seen Shane's been posting um, a lot of uh, posts about, you know, each member of the team. Yeah, that was, that's great. That was great. Yeah. Even the pictures are better than anybody's team pictures I've ever seen. It's, it's just a really nice human touch to what's going on. I really, really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah. And I mean, heck, we're learning more about each other that we don't ever get to know, you yeah. know, you just thought that Watara, Wataro, our APAC leader, you know, plays the fiddle or plays the violin cycles and, you know, sitting at the dam conference watching on his, on his bike with his violin and watching the dam conference in the middle of the night. You know? There you go. Yeah. Um, but our business hasn't slowed down. Thankfully, um, our customers have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, through all of this, being able to do things remotely. Um, it is a little bit more challenging, right? Because trying to get everybody used to that and feeling comfortable with that. Um, but it's really worked out quite well. So it, um, I think you, know, we've heard a lot of conversation about what's the new norm going to be yeah. when COVID is over or not really over. I don't think it'll ever really be over. Um, but when, you know, we're really back a little bit more normal, what's that going to look like? You know, mm -hmm. are we going to travel as much? Are we going to be doing a lot more of this? Yeah. You know, um, it's been fun. I've seen a couple of uh, OEMs actually open the manufacturing floor in showing live, you know, live virtual tours, if you will. Yep. Of your shop. That would have never happened, you know. Yeah, it's jump started all that. Yeah. yeah, you know, and so um, it's just going to be interesting to see what that new norm is. It is. It is. I'm excited to see that uh, roll out from Link 3D because you guys have been doing a lot to connect the community and I'm grateful for that. So thank you for continuing the conversation. You know, it's a it's a it's a pleasure to see that happen right now. I look to look forward to seeing a lot more from Link 3D. So uh, yeah. thank thank you for taking your time this morning, Roxanne. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know uh, it's, it's, it's early and I wish you a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. And I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Absolutely. All cheers. right, hey, well, hey, yeah, coffee cheers. You believe me? Do you believe me now? Come on, baby. Come on. Yeah.